Hello everyone, I'm Faiza Khan, Director of Corporate Affairs and Foundation here at City and Guilds, and I'm delighted to be joined by two members of our Young Learner Advisory Team this National Apprenticeship Week to share their experience of being current and former apprentices. And we're also joined by the esteemed Minister of State, Rob Palfin. I just want to say a bit about the Young Learner Advisory Team, um, who are a group of young learners that we stood up here at City and Guilds because actually they help to challenge us to make sure we're doing things properly. And um, shortly they're going to challenge the Minister a bit um, on apprenticeships. So um, they bring direct experience to the conversation and um, I hope it will be a really great chance to hear their perspective. I'm now going to hand over to Jerry and Tanaka just to introduce themselves. And Minister, actually, if you could introduce your brief to the young people, that'd be really great. We'll then go into the first question with Jerry. Over to you, Jerry. Thank you, Minister, for taking your time today to speak to us. So I'm Jerry. I did an apprenticeship at Microsoft two years ago, a level four in data analytics. So I have a background in apprenticeships. And now I'm part of this YLAT team trying to push for apprenticeships. And currently I am a, a data consultant. So pretty much owe my career to that sort of apprenticeship getting me into the route and further down the line. Over to you, Michael. So thanks, Jared. Thank you, Minister, for taking the time to be here. I'm currently a level six degree apprentice studying civil engineering. I'm also working as a project manager in the highways industry. I've completed a level three and level four apprenticeship in the past and really want to be an advocate for the next generation for apprenticeships and vocational education. Fantastic. So, um, Minister, do you just want to say a little bit about your brief? I'm sure everyone knows who you are, but it's always good to to get you to say it in your own words. Yes. Well, hello, everyone. It's uh, lovely to be here and to talk about apprenticeships, which is my favourite uh, subject, and also to do with City and Guilds that does so much for skills. My name is Rob um, Halfon, and uh, by the way, please call me Rob or Robert in this interview. Um, and I am the Minister for Apprenticeship Skills and higher education. Um, and this is my second time doing this job. I previously did it between 2016 and 2017. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so Jerry, over to you for the first question. So hopefully these questions aren't too taxing and should be <laughs> very light easy. Yeah. First question being, in your opinion, what is the best thing about friendships and what do they provide? If, if, if I may, um, I want to just tell you how I came to be doing this brief. And um, it was back in 2008, 2009. I wasn't even an MP, although I was a parliamentary candidate. And I met some young people being looked after by Catch-22 and the Princess Trust. And a lot of them started talking about apprentices. and But they really wanted to do it, uh, do be, be, be an apprentice. But there were no opportunities and it was really hard for them. And they, the websites were complicated. The job interviews were far away. So I decided on that day that if I ever got elected to Parliament as MP, I would and do everything I could to promote apprenticeships and skills. My first ever speech in the House of Commons way back in 2010, part of it had a was about trying to get schools to encourage more students to do apprenticeships. And it's been, I've been the passion of my political life. And the reason is, is because I see that apprenticeships answer so many questions. They help young people get on the ladder of opportunity. Um, and the top of that ladder, of course, is jobs, skills, prosperity, for themselves, for their friends, their families. Um, but it also helps meet our country's skills needs as well, because we have skills that we need to have to succeed as a nation. And of course, it helps, in my view, um, significantly those from disadvantaged backgrounds, because you earn while you learn, you get a good skill. 90% of plus of apprentices who complete their apprenticeship get good jobs in the companies that have hired them. So it really is a ladder of opportunity to the disadvantage as much as everybody else. Yeah, I think I completely agree with that. And just on that point, I think we see that large multinational companies have great masses of apprentices applying to them and they, they go get through the door like I did mine at Microsoft, there's thousands of applicants. But what is, what is government doing to push more smaller companies to get applicants and for them to re retain their talent? Yeah, well, first of all, it's very important that big companies hire apprenticeships and that's why we introduced the apprenticeship levy. And what that levy does, it means it gives, um, ensures that big companies can hire apprentices but what it also means is that we if they don't use their levy we then have the funds to pay smaller businesses for the predominantly for the cost of training so what we do to help small uh, businesses hire apprentices which i think is what you're asking me is we fund them about 95 percent of the costs of the training so that's a pretty big amount of the apprentice 
We also give small businesses £1,000. We give the provider £1,000 every time they hire an apprentice. If a small business has less than 50 employees and employees a 16 to 19 year old, we pay all the training costs. Um, so we're doing everything we can. We're trying to cut red tape and regulation for small businesses. In the old days, amazingly, there was like a, a limit on the number of apprentices that small businesses could employ. I stopped that and we've removed the cap so they can employ whatever number of apprentices that they need. So in essence, we're trying to help them with funding and incentives, financial, we're reducing red tape and we're trying to make it as easy as possible for small businesses to employ apprentices. And uh, there's a lot of work to do, but I've just as I've seen big business, I've seen great examples all over the country of small businesses hiring the most incredible apprentices and benefiting um, the work that they do. That's great to hear. And my final question is, <clears throat> what is done by government to bridge the gap between the vocational and academic routes into, into your first career? Well, this is a really, really good question. And I think it's uh, a problem that has affected our country in a very bad way for many, many years, because for too long, academic education was seen as more prestigious as those who were going more of a vocational and technical path. And that is very different from if you go to countries like Switzerland, for example, I think something like close to 70% of students do the vocational route. And so, and there's been this artificial divide between skills and knowledge. And what I always say to people is you, um, you need to learn the names of fish and how uh, the biology of fish and so on. But you also need to uh, learn how to fish and you can't have one without the, without the other. And so, so what we've done is we've brought in a huge range of forms to boost the prestige of apprenticeships, of our new T-level program, which is about boosting vocational qualifications, 16 to 19, those who prefer to stay on at college or sixth form college. And um, we have introduced higher technical qualifications. We've transformed careers. We've made past legislation to make sure that schools have to now invite uh, apprenticeship organisations and technical and vocational organisations into the schools to promote apprenticeships with the, with the students. Um, and slowly, slowly, things are changing, uh, which is really encouraging because we are talking about skills uh, in a way that we've never had before. Ten years ago, I doubt you guys would have been interviewing um, an apprentice minister in the same way um, because it would have been a podcast about going to university. I should add, by the way, that I'm passionate about universities too because I think people, I'm also the university minister, people should have different routes, but I'm also uh, want more students to do degree apprenticeships because they then get the best of both worlds. They don't have to take out a loan and they get paid and they get a job at the end. Thank you. I'll pass it over to Slack to ask some questions. So you may have touched on some of this already, but I'm very curious to know what plan does the government have to work more closely with employers to embed apprenticeships into their organisation and also drive more opportunity for apprentices as well? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're doing a huge amount. One of the reasons why we introduced the levy was so that big employers would be encouraged to have apprentices. And that has really changed. It's incredible what has gone on, you know, from Amazon to Google, to the police service, to the NHS, legal in between, um, you have got uh, big organisations, big companies hiring apprentices in a way that never happened before. You, you have um, big companies now who have um, apprentice directors, or sometimes they call them chief knowledge officers, on the board, on the board of these companies. And they're really inspiring people and they're determined to to have apprentices and and we're trying to uh, the levy else as I mentioned before helps us fund training the 95% of the cost for smaller businesses um, to hire an apprentice and of course all the costs as I mentioned if the small business has less than 50 employers and they have a young person of 16 to 19. The other thing that we've done is that previously before 2010 apprenticeships were predominantly focused on the traditional crafts they're very important but things like electrical plumbing engineer um, some engineering but pre predominantly traditional crafts but we felt that what we wanted was employer-led qualifications of very high quality so we created something called the institute for apprenticeships and technical education 
And what they do is they get together with groups of employers, small business and big business, and they design the qualification. So we now have over 690 different apprenticeship occupations from aeronautical to zoology with all different levels from level two right up to level seven, degree level and higher. And all these qualifications have been designed by employers because obviously if the employers design them, they're more likely to give people an apprentice and give people a job because they design, they know what the what kind of qualifications that they, their employers need. So everything we've done in terms of funding and designing the qualifications um, and has been about um, ensuring um, that uh, we get business embedded into the apprenticeship system. And you've seen that. I mean, we've had over five million apprentices in all kinds of occupations since 2010. And you, you yourself are doing a degree level apprenticeship that never existed before. So we introduced that in 2014. Um, we've had well over, I mean, I think over around 200,000 plus uh, degree apprentices since that time. And uh, that is amazing because um, it is really given the prestige to apprenticeships. And some all those people who want to go to university but want a skill, they have that option as well. Absolutely. And I'll say one of the things I've seen myself as a degree apprentice is studying alongside the full-time students. And it's been such a privilege to get the same level of knowledge and not be any different from them. So I'm very grateful to hear that the government's working on that. No, thank you. And well done to you, because uh, my dream one day, this isn't official government policy, so just, I'll just have to be very clear. And I've got someone in my office looking very concerned when I say that. Um, but my, my personal dream is that one day 50% of students would be like you doing a degree apprenticeship. That's fantastic. And thanks for that. So this year we've got, Racial Equality Week running at the same time as National Apprenticeship Week. What are the steps that government is taking to make sure that apprenticeships are equal and fair for ethnic minorities as well? Yeah, so that's also a very important question. And I have something in the department. I mentioned the ladder of opportunity each time. And each um, rung of the ladder has a real policy behind it. And the, the two pillars that are obviously hold the rungs together, one of them is opportunities and social justice. And I'm absolutely determined and have always believed that we need to ensure that um, apprenticeships are available to all people, whatever their background, whatever their, their um, difficulty in life. And we do a huge amount of work on this. So, um, for example, um, we have an apprenticeship diversity network, um, which is very successful to encourage apprentices from all backgrounds to do apprenticeships. Um, we um, have just started a mentoring scheme. I know this isn't necessarily directly um, for um, those from different um, ethnic backgrounds, but we've um, started something called um, Apprentice Mentoring Scheme for those who have disabilities, because I want disabled um, people to be able to do uh, apprenticeships. We've increased the care leavers bursary from £1,000 to £3,000 for those who are care leavers again because I want more people to have disadvantage um, those from disadvantaged backgrounds to do apprenticeships and what um, I'm, I'm pleased to say that the number of apprentices from an um, ethnic minority background has gone from 10% up to 15% of apprentices that's we've got a long way to go a lot more work to do but we have the diversity network we also have the careers enterprise company going around schools promoting apprenticeships for all uh, individuals and also the National Career Service where that helps uh, students as well uh, from all backgrounds um, to try and um, offer them the apprenticeship um, offering and, and our Skills for Life page uh, which we've just recently relaunched with an incredible advert so I urge you to just go on YouTube and type in Skills for Life there's a one minute version and a 20 second version um, that features uh, some amazing um, people some of them from um, ethnic uh, minority backgrounds because we want to do everything we can it's an incredible advert a very powerful advert um, to ensure that um, everybody from whatever background they come know that apprenticeships available for everyone oh that's brilliant and yeah i think i've seen that advert I like it linkedin yeah it's very good very much oh, like oh i'm very happy because we've worked on it for a year with the team in the part of education i wanted it to have power and emotional appeal you know to really hit you in the heart 
um, when you see it and to make anyone, even if they're not an apprentice, everyone wants to make them want to do a skill or an apprenticeship. That's why we did those ads. Fantastic. And as a former and current apprentice, do you think there's anything more that we can be doing to inspire the next generation? Yeah, one million percent. So what um, at the end of the day, I'm a politician. Just forget my political party, but I'm a politician. As you can probably see, I'm genuinely passionate about apprentices and I go around the country. In fact, next week I'll be traveling many hundreds of miles to literally um, last year. I did northwest, north, Midlands to the south. I did 800 miles. This year I'll be going from Cornwall to Ipswich in one week, less than one week, four and a half days. Um, and uh, I'm going around the country promoting apprenticeships. But the people who have real influence, if I'm really honest with you, I have some, but the people who have real influence on apprenticeships are you and your colleague who are interviewing me and many others who have done apprenticeships and who uh, really get it and understand it. And if you um, go out there and explain to your friends when they're not sure what they want to do and tell them about the incredible opportunities that you have had, that makes a huge difference. That's much more powerful than me. And that's why we created the Apprenticeship Ambassador Network. We've got businesses doing, we've also got hundreds of incredible apprentices up and down the country who go to schools, who go to colleges, who talk to their friends, who talk to their families and encourage people to do apprentices. So if there's one thing you can do for me is to do everything you can. I think about becoming an apprenticeship ambassador and do everything you can to uh, promote apprentices because they are going to listen to you uh, in a way that they may not listen to me. And you really you just will, don't know what a difference you can make to someone's life if you encourage them on the apprenticeship path. I have a bonus question to ask you while you wait there. So um, what what could be done to, what's, what's been done to promote opportunities in both small businesses? So currently, small businesses and large businesses apprentice, both offer, offer apprenticeships. But what what is done to ensure that they're both seen as equal opportunities and the progression is equal or better and small companies aren't seen as worse off. Yeah. So um, I tried to mention we're doing a lot with small businesses so we've removed the cap on the number of apprentices. We're cutting the burden of regulation so it's easy for them to hire an apprentice. We're trying to, um, uh, we give them a lot of funding. So 95% of the training costs, 100% of training costs if they have a 16 to 19 year old and they have less than 50 employers. And um, we have, we try and help them with the providers, we work with the providers as well um, to uh, try and ensure that they can lift the burden on, um, you know, red tape for particularly for smaller businesses. It's much easier for big business to deal with all that stuff. And the other thing, going back to the big business thing, is that we're now allowed twenty five percent of the levy. So that's a quarter. Uh, sorry, not to, it's more than a quarter. Twenty five percent. To be used for funding small businesses, so they can use their levy and choose any small business they want, and say, right, we will fund an apprentice, use that levy to fund an apprentice in that small business. So, we're trying to um, ensure parity. We want to get more small businesses to hire hire apprenticeships. Thank you. Very really great to hear. And um, back to Pfizer. Thank you, Minister Halford. Thank you to Jerry. Thank you to, to Tamika for joining us. Um, this National Apprenticeship Week, I really hope we can make the most of apprenticeships, change more lives by giving people the skills they need for life. Thank you. Thank you for taking the trouble to interview me. Thank you for your time. Take care. Cheers.